What is crack a lock lads? I'm gonna flash up the mill and do some dickery. Remember that really cool uh, project, the uh, Apollo escape hatch for the Smithsonian Institute? Yeah, pretty fucking cool, right? Yeah, I didn't get invited because the uh, guys didn't want my internet stink lines getting on their Instagram feed. Fuck them. That's a brand of French wrenches. So I'll take a sloppy seconds with uh, John Saunders project. He's making, or rather him and Buddy Ganu, I think Buddy Ganu is running the show. Uh, but John, of course, footing the bill. They're building uh, the Johnny Five, uh, why do I want to say rocket? No, not pink rocket, the uh, robot. I had a couple of caveats. I've been hoed down this row before. Do not want to make parts from non-dimension, non-tolerances, and then try and fit it up in the field. It ain't gonna work. So I asked him if he could be gentle on me. I have something with real nice loose tolerances and uh, he sent this neck bracket. So I was gonna hog it out of solid billet, being aeroscrace grade and so forth, but uh, found this little piece that'll work out perfect. Prestidigitating the part in all its digital glory. Never mind the marks on, the, on your eyeballs. This welding spatter on the Okay, much like the Duclaw, we got a long skinny bit flapping in the breeze. So we go to machine that, it'll uh, be shaking like a Rottweiler passing a peach pit. But what we got to do, and so I'm not even going to bother. What we could do, machine that out of a big chunk of billet and have some meat over here and here so that it doesn't weave wobble and then deck that off, clamp it a proper way. But instead, we are going to go with a high production way we're gonna we're gonna spend the time so that we can make a whole bunch of these even though he only needs one sometimes like doing the hard uh, things the hard uh, yeah, you know what i'm saying okay so what i wanted to show you though is this brilliant uh clamping mechanism what uh, dan gelbart shows in his uh prototyping series and this uh, this was a game changer for me because it gets rid of the need for mighty bites and all kinds of strange fixturing. If everybody knew how to do this, then uh, they wouldn't be selling mighty bites. This is the workpiece here. It needs to be, yeah, so clamped. And the critical thing is we don't open up the mouth over wide. So what we're going to do is critically, we're going to take the outside dimensions here and we're going to make one little slut two little sluts a bigger one put a very accurate hole right right uh no not right there right there and then jam a bung in there you'll see huh works in solid works you'll recall the dewclaw so rudely interrupting us with his hot metal glue gun he was making this fixture to bring everything up so i could mount a couple of vices and have more clearance from the uh, five axis trunnion. All right, well, I know it's bad, but don't worry, it's nothing the grinder can't take care of. I'm not one to turn down free labor. It's like beer. If it's free, it's good. Although working with Duclaw is sometimes like working against somebody else. I'm gonna come in here with the probe, probe, uh, beep, boop, da dee, release the smooth. Uh,
plainly obvious to the most casual of observers. That's you. I've plumbed the depths of my own stupidity and found no end to the shallowness. For some reason, I thought through some means of quantum mechanical tunneling that one single tapered pipe plug would be enough to clamp it. But I gotta clamp this side as well. So back to the drawing board. And uh, since I gotta go back to the drawing board anyway, I might as well not get rid of half an inch of material. And this time, as you saw there, I did all the ops in the five axis. So I wouldn't, I would only need the one setup. I came in on this side, then flipped her over, came in from the other side, did the lion's share of the machining, and then just came in with a wee dingle dangle dingus end and cut the burr off. Of course, you never get this to match up, especially on the five axis because it's pretty tough to get her perfect. So I just came in after the fact and skim cut that so that everything would fit. Uh, uh, it's pretty cute. I haven't threaded it yet, but just want to make sure. Oh, natürlich, Mama. Pas uh, uh. We got a special consideration because we got fixed string. So I just added to the stock there. You see that? Uh, uh, uh. Essentially, all we're going to do is just come in, beep boop, speed that up, run this. On the first side, probe it, it'll come in, a little tiny end mill. It'll do its little jitterbug routine here. That's the Fandango in tap shoes. Bob's your auntie. What, what? So you see that came in real far away because I'm going to have to cut through some of that fixturing. So we're starting that through spindle coolant really blasted away with those small ones. Now we're going to put, woo, we're going to put her in 5%. I think we're happy, but I can't see anything, so no crashes yet. Now she ain't bag. That'd be good enough for the girls I go out with, but seeing as how this is going to somebody else, we'll have another kick at the cat. See if we can't make her meow. You see on the front side here, a little bit chowdery. You're gonna go in there with a bigger end mill. I'll spare you the gory details on account of this, this is a foregone conclusion. Now we got the, the fixed string and all the tool paths and all that fingered out. So pretty interesting what you can do with the flexture that is a compliant mechanism and some pipe, some bung plugs in your hole. It's, it's on there. Good, and it ain't going nowhere. I thought that was pretty interesting. And the next time you see this, it'll be on uh, Johnny's Johnny 5. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. <laughs>